Okay? Trans mute. Force transform. Now, in my last video, I was looking at this, which is the the Gacha Spartan, and as part of that video, I explained that this was not in the original Battle of the Planets, and so. This prompted me to go and have a look at the history of Battle of the Planets and Gatchaman and sort of everything in between. And something was sort of tickling me in the back of my mind. And I thought, I've got Battle of the Planets on DVD somewhere. I'm sure I have. So I went on a bit of a hunt and eventually I found this. And for some strange reason, I call very clearly where I got this and it was in a post office in York. Um, I lived there briefly once and I, I, I'm guessing I picked it up then because I, I saw Mark on the front cover of this and it said G-Force on it and I thought great be Battle of the Planets and when you open it up there's absolutely nothing on the discs it's really bizarre. It's like the most budget release you can possibly imagine for, you know, bunches of episodes from four really old series, basically, that someone's obviously managed to, to pull together for, for whatever reason. I mean, you know, who knows who had the idea of, of pulling these all together in, in one place, but um, they did. But the, the curious, well, the even more curious thing about this is that the... What's on here isn't actually Battle of the Planets at all. Um, let's show you the front again. It says G-Force Guardians of Space. Now, G-Force Guardians of Space is and isn't Battle of the Planets. It isn't in the sense that it used different character names and it had a different approach to the the dub that it took, or the edit that it took, of Gatchaman, of Science Ninja Team Gatchaman, which was the Japanese original show. And G-Force Guardians of Space didn't actually come out until 1986, whereas Battle of the Planets was much older than that. So, little did I realise that what I actually had here was slightly unusual. I don't even know if it's, it was particularly well released in the UK. This was released... Um, in 2003 by Hollywood DVD apparently um, and it it is basically a fascinating little glimpse into what they did with this particular version of series one of Gatchaman which which is, is derived from so this is basically a different cut and a different dub of Battle of the Planets um, in the sense that it's an English dub of Science Ninja Team Gatchaman, but it's taken with a slightly more mature take on the series, basically. So I'm going to run you the first sort of 10 minutes or so from this DVD, and I decided that I was going to compare it with the Battle of the Planets version. Now, it turned out I didn't have Battle of the Planets on DVD, so I got it. And what prompted doing this video is that this DVD looks gorgeous. <laughs> I don't, I don't often, I don't, well, I don't redo DVD, um, you know, reviews per se at all. But what, what just made me chuckle was the, the, the difference between this playback release of Battle of the Planets and that very, very budgety G-Force um, DVD because someone has clearly gone to some effort here to use a sort of a decent um, you know sort of manga image of um, G-Force um, for this and as you can see it's a really nice sort of striking design on the inside of the DVD as well so fair do to them they obviously didn't skimp um, and I just thought I'd show it to you because I thought it was 
rather nice as a, as a sort of an intro into the um, the comparison between the two. And you can see that they've also done a, you know, a reasonable sort of jazzy uh, DVD. And interesting, it's it's got Playback Universal on it there. I've forgotten they were... I remember that they... I think Playback did things like Knight Rider and Airwolf and the A-Team. Um, I think it was them that, that released some episodes of those. So they obviously look at kind of 80s era sort of stuff. Um, but it, note, it notes on the front of the disc here actually that Battle of the Planets is copyright 1978 Sandy Frank film syndication. And that is how old Battle of the Planets and Gatchaman are. And yet even in 86, they were still re-releasing them. And I know that Battle of the Planets, or at least you know, the first series of Gatchaman, has been redubbed since in its Science Ninja Team Gatchaman form. So you can now watch Science Ninja Team Gatchaman as a more or less sort of, you know, spot on Japanese version of it, but in English, which again is, is a miles apart from the Battle of the Planets edition that we got with good old Seven Zox, Seven in it. Um, and interestingly, he isn't present in the G-Force version. So what I'm going to do now is, um, as I say, run those, run the two next to each other. And you can see the sort of quite subtle differences between the the way in which the the action and so on has been handled um and i'll, I'll give you some commentary as we go because i think that's probably the the easiest way to do it so let's kick off five teenage champions g-force guardians of space fighting for good over evil fighting so what we've got top left is battle of the planets bottom right Ace we've got G-Force Guardians of Space um, and I've tried to time it so that the actual episodes content wise start running together but it's still going to be a little bit out of sync for a very good reason and that's because the robot guy you can see top left, Seven Zark Seven, was an invention for Battle of the Planets he wouldn't normally be there which means that he's actually taking a narrator role that didn't exist in the original Gatchaman. Whereas G-Force Guardians of Space is doing something slightly different, but it's leaving the original footage in, I think, and which gives you a slightly different explanation on why certain things are happening. So, I'm going to leave the audio in for both so you can listen to it when I'm not talking, obviously. Um, and you notice that in Battle of the Planets, the team is called G-Force. So it's not a massive stretch to have G-Force Guardians of Space because the team is called G-Force. Um, and what I've done is I've left the sort of the full original intro in Battle of the Planets because it, it burbles on for a bit and Seven Sark Sevens is narrated a bit for a while here before the actual episode starts. So, difference. Yeah, it's sent to Neptune, but it appears to be on Earth. But part of the thing with Battle of the Planets was it was they were trying to suggest that some of the stuff that was happening was actually off Earth. So the um, the Phoenix was actually going off Earth to, to to do battle with things, and I don't think that was the idea. I think the idea with Gatchman was that it was actually all on Earth. To guard this vital base against attack by space pirates and alien enemies is the huge responsibility of five incredible, highly specialized people called G-Force. Oh, I'm a seven dark seven. Complex computerized coordinator for G-Force. Everything clears through me here at Center Neptune. I keep watch every minute, day and night, on each member of the G-Force team. I don't need sleep. I'm a... He also looks like a locust. So here we go. So this is the footage. You see the coloration is a little bit different, but basically this is the original Gatchman footage. The Seven Zark Seven is still going. You don't get that narration in the G-Force. And it, already it's slightly out of sync. That's not me. That's a, a, a footage editing choice. Touch out of sync. My 
So in Battle of the Planets, it's not uranium that's at risk, in G-Force it is. So G-Force is already taking a more grown-up view. And immediately the difference here is that in Battle of the Planets you don't see people being put in jeopardy. Whereas this guy in the control tower in G-Force just bought the farm. Love the mecha though, it's very Godzilla-esque. So again, these guys are getting stamped on in G-Force. That's not that's not happening in Battle of the Planets. It's fine to have the monster getting shot at by multiple launch rocket systems, that's no problem. In both. <laughs> So as per usual, the, the conventional weapons are having no luck at all by uh, battling the Space Terrapin slash Stegosaur, which it is in G-Force. In Battle of the Planets, it's a Terrapin. <laughs> Because of the editing, they're, they're still slightly out of sync. You can, see, you can see the same sequences are getting repeated, just that G-Force is a little bit behind. So what we now have is 7 Sark 7 doing the right shit. Whereas now we have a sort of Council of War kind of session going on in G-Force to set things up. And we get Transmute from Battle of the Planets, which I used to do all the time when I was a little Transmute. And um, in G-Force it's Transform. Back. I think a gang of international terrorists is responsible for wanting to create destruction on a grand scale. And if you have no idea of who the terrorists are, sorry to say we have no idea of who they may be. No, Interpol doesn't know who they are. That's funny. Interpol doesn't know who they But we are in trouble. Well, Anderson, what are we to do? Wait for them to strike again? I'm afraid so. We are completely in the dark about that. And you see, the names are different as well. The teams are com called completely different names for some reason. They made G-Force really Americanized in terms of naming. It's, it's quite odd. Also, the um, I'm not sure what, what his official character is, but the, in, is it Eop, the, 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 the smallest member of the team, just speaks in toots and whistles in Battle of the Planets. Whereas in G-Force, he does have proper speech patterns. So that's an interesting choice as well. We'll hear in a minute this guy. What is this G-Force? Secret organization. Five young agents. And different smart. He would good backgrounds in science. Grown from a tiny embryonic cell. So it's key up in that version. He speaks in a little interior, but his powers are amazing. And finally, this is James. Yeah, so, so G1's name is Ace in G Force. It's, it's Mark in Battle Pass. Just have to shut up while he's transformed, but. <laughs> G-Force members all have miniaturized paragonic implants, which give them fantastic abilities beyond those of other human orphans who have been trained almost since birth to develop those secret and serious powers. So in Battle of the Planets, they're basically supposed to be cyborgs, I think. I don't know if that's the official line for 
Hold your course, G-Force. You're Could always that a beam. Put, 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 my bear. Roger. Stop, you can't go after it all alone. It's from Spectra. This is the third time we've been invaded by them. Just let me get a laser bead on it. This will be their last attack. I believe that's what you said last time, Jason. Uh-oh. The invader has disappeared from my scanner. I'm afraid you're on your own. So it's quite funny because they're using Seven Sox and Seven as if he's having interactions with them. But I'll be on standby. Which of course originally he wouldn't have done. And over. Good old reliable Sark says it's invaders from Planet Spectra again. Wonder what they'll look like this time. So unfortunately the two are quite out of sync at this point, but it's because of the narration. Not on the same body. Hey team, look! There's something down there! We know it's the key wing G force. Don't be daring in good faith. It may be attacking our underwater base. Nothing on the scanners, Mark. Not a sign of it. Mark, I think we should have stayed above. The other four are born. Great. This baby. Ominous rumbling music going on in Battle of Planets whilst they're still trying to dock up in, in G Force. You see a very brief glimpse of some other people in Battle of Planets there. Gotta be a bomb. Surface tiny. robot has disappeared from radar. You'll have to. So they're mentioning Galactor and, and the professor's giving them instruction there rather than yes, being sir. seven rather than seven to seven. I wonder why it wasn't included in Battle of the Planet so much. Alive? Yes, alive, but ugly alien. Sure, I'd like to crush it to pieces. Let's give it a laser blast. No, Dive at it, I Tiny. Take that back. Hold it. Hey, we can't destroy it yet. I can, believe me. Just let me get up. Look, Jake, it's only one attack vehicle. There may be more. We've got to follow it and find its base. We're gonna play tag. Isn't that fun, Tiny? What happened to the state monster? A thing like that can't just disappear. But the screen is blank. I wonder if I should wear glasses. Just for work. Uh-oh. I'm getting something now. Calling G-Force. Space Monster. I'm wondering actually if the, if the background music they're using is the same in both. Oh, yes. It's a good thing we had ears on, Dark. Yes, Princess. You're lucky I always keep my sensors about me. I wonder if I need a sword. It's headed for Doris Ball number seven. That's what I'm sure. Wait, I'm... You're not in charge, no? He up right. I say wipe it out. Hold it, Jason. For what? Ground. I think I know the answer. What's the question? You know why we haven't located this base? Because it's the base. That's pretty weird. I'll prove it if we can get inside. I spotted an open ventilator shaft in its flank. <laughs> Yeah, I know, yeah. This isn't your bag. You'll get your chance later. Okay, Mark, let's try your kooky idea. Hey, if you don't mind, it's my turn. I'm going with Mark. Oh, lucky, oh, that 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 yes. What? And he's smashing the earth base oh. to smithereens. <laughs> Coordinate lift off on three, Princess. Let's get him. <laughs> Now this features in the back of the planet's intro, this bit where they're both sort of jumping and getting across the terror bit. Check the upper level, Prince. I'll go below. I'll look for the phaser control. I hope so too, Dirk. Careful, Prince. If you need help, sing out. Thanks, Commander, but watch your own step. Hey, 
Now, this is me, you know, that's just where the Battle of the Planets footage ends. But I've taken it that far so you can see how the G-Force footage goes, because it's quite different. Why risk your life, Aggie? I'll go with Ace. You're needed here, I'd better go. That ship is carrying uranium and I'm in charge of dangerous substances. So it's quite interesting, they're not they're not very unified in either of the versions. They have sort of arguments. Um, but the G-Force is, is maintaining, the, a sort of, again, a more sort of mature storyline in terms of there being sort of a dangerous substance, so Aggie's got to go with um, Ace. Classic Death Star schoolboy error leaving Ventilator the ventilation shaft. shaft open on the outside of your vehicle, but anyway. So watch this bit. So that's completely edited out of Battle of the Planets. It's much, much softer. Um, it's nowhere near as violent, even as this G-Force version is. That's more Gatchaman than Battle of the Planets. Clear example of how different the two series were. And um, I imagine that that trend would have continued. You know, if you were to compare Battle of the Planets with the original Gatchaman, it would be really, really different. Um, but I suspect the G-Force has probably left more of the original violence in and probably more of the original sort of storylines in as well, just to give you, you know, more of a flavour of the original series one of Gatchaman. I suspect the Eagle Riders probably did something similar with ep seasons two and three of Gatchaman as well, so they probably took a more mature route. And you can now get a dub of season one of Gatchaman, which will probably take that sort of G-Force route to where it's a more you know, direct, grown-up version of Battle of the Planets. But it was just interesting to see that, because those are only sort of eight years apart. G-Force only came along eight... Well, so G-Force Guardians of Space only came along eight years after the original Sandy Frank Battle of the Planets. So you can see already there's been quite a sort of significant shift in attitudes towards what's acceptable for a kid's TV show, which that was kind of what I was interested in, in seeing, really, was just... You know, how much they could and couldn't get away with just a few years later. So um, it's quite an interesting one to see from a nostalgia point of view and also from a sort of, you know, how things can change over time in terms of what can and can't get into children's shows. So just thought I'd share that one with you. Cheers for now.